right, I, I have a couple questions here just before you get off. Just curious about the defensive zone structure because uh, recently this year, uh, new head coach, uh, name slipping my mind, forgot to write it down. They implemented a different kind of structure. They play more of a swarm in zone. Can you just tell us a little bit more about the swarm yeah. structure? So this, the swarm is interesting. Basically, like if we just take the puck in the corner as an example, like there's going to be two Leafs players pick a team that they're playing against. They just played the Jets. So there's going to be two mm -hmm. Leafs, two Jets. The whole point of the swarm is to make sure that your third player is in the battle. So you're basically outnumbering them three on two. And mm -hmm. essentially what you're doing is just bringing your wingers to the front of the net. So it's like now their responsibility in front of the net. Mm -hmm. So it's great if you win that battle, if someone pokes a puck loose and now you can really break down from there because all your, your kind of chips are in the corner and, and, you know, you're leaving forwards in front of the net to kind of do a defenseman's job. So there's, you know, there's some, there's some pros and cons to the swarm. I always preferred like the, the layered kind of system, which I think Sheldon Keefe has been doing since he, since he took over, especially post COVID. Um, and that was the biggest difference that Sheldon had compared to Babs, where Babs was playing essentially three one-on-ones low in the zone and then having the two wingers kind of play halfway between the D, halfway between, you know, the net, just kind of playing in that, you know, hash mark kind of area. Whereas I think Sheldon now wants just different layers of support. So not necessarily having that third player right in like a swarm, but hmm. close by. So you're staying by the net a little bit. And if something happens and you see that puck poke free, now you have the green light to, to kind of get involved. So um, this, the, I remember in Vancouver, um, Elaine Vigneault was doing the swarm. And it was, it was the swarm at training camp. And then when I, I went back to junior, I, I came back later in that season for the playoffs. And the swarm wasn't really happening anymore. Like, I think they had, they had moved off it as well. It's just it's super, super aggressive and it can lead to some like bigger chances in front of the net, but Leafs have gotten better defensively this year. Like it was not, mm -hmm. it was an ugly start um, defensively for them. And that was one of the things that Sheldon had like made a lot of strides with this team. He really yeah. had them buying in. It's funny now that I'm like, I'm out calling games. Um, I like to kind of go down a morning skate, talk to some guys. And I was talking to a player and we we're just, you know, a guy I know shooting the shit. And I said, okay, like, tell me, like, what do you guys think when you play Toronto? And like, what, what's, you know, what do you talk about? He said, well, you know, you, you just have to watch out for the star players. They're just so good, right? Like, and they can do stuff that other guys can't. It's really dangerous. I said, oh, well, how, how are they defensively? He said, the best they ever were defensively was in the Canadian division. He goes, that was the best defensive Toronto team that I that I've ever played against. He goes, I think since then they've they've become a little more loose, and especially this year. So take that for what you will. That's a guy who's you know who's been playing against them. Yeah, well, that's that's always interesting to hear other people's perspective of it. And like, man, that team was so good. That team could have made made a run, but uh, that COVID yeah, we don't want to go there. It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's, oh, it's uh, the PTSD meme. Anyways, uh, yeah. a couple like. Two quick questions here before before you head out. Just a question about uh, def like continuing on with the defensive structure, more looking towards the breakout here. Uh, I noticed last year uh, the team had a little bit of struggle promoting the puck on their breakout, going from D to forward, and then that that first and second pass here. It feels like, especially in the playoffs and especially against Florida, we struggled against that mightily, and it feels like they kind of cracked the code on us, where they kind of like to seal that wall, uh, the winger off the wall, and and kind of force us to go through our sentiment, who are like other than Matthews are, are relatively slower than, than uh, last year. They were relatively slower. So um, have you noticed that like te more teams kind of trying to seal off the wall against the Leafs? Um, and do you think that that kind of, that teams have kind of cracked the code on like how the Leafs are planning or trying to break out here? The Leafs. Yeah. And this, and this goes back to even when I was in the organization, the Leafs are reluctant to rim pucks and push kind of battles to the neutral zone. It, it like, there was always this notion, let's go back and hit the centerman. Okay. You can't always do that. But if you are, if that's your mentality, then a lot of times you end up breaking out out the strong side. So the puck, you know, the side that the puck came in on. And mm. I think that goes to your point, Jason, about like teams really know that about the Leafs now, and they'll make sure that they're sealing the strong side wall. And they're almost kind of daring the Leafs to go out the weak side wall, you know, almost giving them that, 
but really kind of clogging things up. And, you know, it's like either the pop pass to the middle won't be there or it's like, you know, a little reverse play and it's like, bang, that guy's right in your face now. And that's when things kind of get stalled in, in their own zone. Like I, I would love for the Leafs to be a, you know, a little more willing to not, I don't call it a rim. Like I had a coach, he said, get this out of, get this idea of it being a rim out of your head. He goes, if you think about it as a, a bypass, think about this. You're bypassing the forecheck, and we're just going to push the battle out into the neutral zone. Like, we're doing it with a purpose. We're not just going back like tree stumps, mm -hmm. rimming pucks. Like, we're doing it with a purpose. And then the forwards and the centermen, everyone knows you're on the same page. Like, that could help. Like, that could help kind of alleviate some of the congestion on, on the strong side of the ice. But there's, there's some teams that go back and they kind of work these little dink passes where, yeah, you can go up the strong side, but it's like, you know, if everyone thinks you're going up that side, you make it look like you are. And it's just a little bump pass to the net now, behind the net. Now you take it and you wheel out the weak side. Like Vancouver does that really, really well. Um, and that's been a big part of part of their success. So, um, yeah, like it's it's real what, what you're seeing. It's just they're – they want to go back and hit the centerman, and a lot of times they're breaking out out the strong side, and it can get a little. It can get a. Little, there's a lot of traffic that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, and Fair if enough. you think actually the Edmonton game was one where they, it was so noticeable that they were just Edmonton's D were all pinching, sealing off the wall, and the Leafs had a little bit of trouble breaking out. Not that they played terrible that game, but that was just something that was very. You know what? You know what Chicago did a lot, and this was when I was in the league. Like, and we would always have this in the pre-scout. Chicago would do this thing as soon as their D had full possession of the puck, and it was like eyes up possession. The wingers would skate at me at a defenseman full speed, literally skate at you full speed. So now you were like, okay, what am I going to do? Am I going to let this guy just skate in behind me and try and pick off a pass? No, I'm going to, I'm going to skate with him. Like I, I got to stay in front of this guy. Next thing I know, he had pushed me out to like the red line. And now there was all this room underneath for the centerman and the D to make some, some plays. And um, Chicago did it. Detroit did it a lot. And, you know, they, I think there's, there's something to that as well on the breakups, like getting your wingers, you know, moving with some motion, with a purpose to help kind of make some room underneath. Yeah. Essentially like run the fly route and then hit the tight end underneath kind of there thing. There you go. You've been playing Madden, you know, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. Frankie, thank you so much for coming on. I think I'll, I, I learned a ton from this, this, this interview here and got a great, a lot of great information. Hope everyone listening did as well. Uh, thanks. Thanks again for coming on. We'll no problem. And I hope, uh, I hope the sleeve monster gives you your sleeves back. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. thanks Frankie. We'll talk soon. See no you, promises. Guys. See ya.